a ring similar to this one um, using Rhino and Modo. You could do everything in Modo, frankly, for this one, but um, they, if you if you are a Rhino user, you'll see where Modo is very useful. Uh, not just the rendering, but the sculpting of the little spike. But if you know Modo well, what I'm trying to say is that you could do everything in Modo. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so here we have different way of making a, a ring. I'll just use a circle. Zero, enter, shift. But it doesn't have to be this way. We could uh, we could use a sweep one. Uh, if you've seen my video, there's many ways of doing a ring. So today, what we'll be using is a pipe. I'll tap pipe, and pipe can have multiple uh, diameter. So you can click here, move here, and if I remember well, when I did that one here, click. I'm just left clicking. If I think this would be too thick. Yeah, something like this. Let me just finish. Voila. Um, shaded. So the advantage of doing it this way is that it's very quick. Everything is circle. But we could uh, do a circle here, a circle here, and then a rounded rectangle. So this would be more rounded. And then we could just go um, sweep one, and uh, yeah, that would work. Um, now, if you know Rhino, you uh, and with F10, uh, or click here, show points. Uh, yeah, I think it's this one. Uh, it will display the point. If you want to hide them, you go escape twice. Uh, and here we can start uh, working in very organic manner. So you could do things like this. You could make things asymmetric a little bit. But um, better than this, you can actually scale things together so it's more like symmetrical let me show you like this to create like a spike things like that sometimes i find in rhino you're better off if you're doing something very precise there is a command it's select i forgot that text uh, loop might be cell loop something else but you could just go like this if I do, a, if I need the loop precisely, I will just take my time and grab it like this. You see? And now you could really. Okay, this is good enough. Uh, okay, that's good enough. So escape, select this, make it a mesh so you can export it. So mesh. Um, doesn't really matter here how many. Uh, you could go for a little bit more if you want, but we can also smooth them in Modo. So you can say OK. Uh, then press Delete and just keep the mesh here. Save it as a version 5 because uh, the guys at uh, Modo haven't had time to update it. So it's fine. I just use 5 and call that ring. Voila. Close Rhino. Modo, file open. Uh, I put this in the desktop. Like this. A um, few things you can do. The ring in Modo will be very, very small because it's actually reading the shift A to see it well. It's reading the size in, uh, in Rhino. So I'm just going to delete this folder. For rendering, sometimes it's better to make it bigger. It's just your light, everything is it's much bigger. So you can go Polygon R to scale and make it much bigger. But if you don't do the, uh, skip this step, it'll be fine. You'll still have a good... Uh, so now to convert it to a sub-D, uh, sometimes what I would do at this level, 
I will also go mesh cleanup, okay? Just to make sure there's no error. And sometimes when you bring things from Rhino, things can be flipped like this. So you go polygon F to flip. If things look a bit transparent, press F like this. So now we want to convert this to a smooth mode, to a, um, a P-sub, Pixar subdivision, or we call that also Cat Moore Clark, uh, a subdivision, Shift tab. So now it's really smooth. At this level, there's a few things you can do just for, f uh, if you want this to be a bit flatter, instead of doing a Boolean, you go in Polygon, you select 2, L, Shift, sorry, let's do that again, L, Shift, click, L, we could even take more, Shift, up arrow, and you could go B, and that would make it pretty flat. If you want it very, very flat, just move this inside of it. But I don't think you even have to do that here. Q. So now you see the inside is flat. But uh, this part is ugly. Uh, but the reason I came here is to show you a bit of the sculpt. So when you are ready to sculpt, you could press F3 and sculpt here. Now, if you want access to the entire skull system, it's better to come here, on the paint. What I'm trying to say is that if I need to do a quick touch-up, use the Move tool, the Push, I would just press F3. But if I really need to sculpt or paint, I would go in Paint. Shift-A to, uh, to uh, Center uh, Frame. Uh, here, if your camera is wrong, you know, you click here. Default, no. But in the new version, model 14, this is fixed. Right, it's fixed. Uh, you don't have to worry. So here we've got all of our brushes. We've got the color picker, the brush uh, fall off, all of our sculpting tool. So paint is for 3D painting like in Photoshop. And the sculpt is here. And this is the active tool. And here, be careful, uh, there's a lot of options. You can use a nozzle, you can use, it's better to use a, a tablet, a Wacom or a Cintiq. Um, but here I'm using a mouse. Uh, but I usually turn the nozzle on. It's uh, pressure sensitive and it's uh, it feels more natural. This is for a high resolution, for multi if you want to do very fine details, subdivide this a lot, so you can sculpt. I'll do a demo. And this is a bunch of sculpting tools. So you can click here, and there's push, inflate. Uh, the most common one is push. You'll use this all the time. And I'll use also move quite a bit, and tangent pitch. But you could use any of them. So let's learn first move. You click here. Move is pretty neat. It's like um, it's like moving point with a fall off. It's using a brush with a read, reading the the ring in 3D. So if you right click and drag, you can change the the size of the brush. So now look what I can do. If I click on it, it will let me move with a fall off. So you can do like major change with this. Right click huh, to, uh, to change the brush. Okay, so very, very useful. I use this a lot. Um, now this is not really a sculpting tool, but move is great. Push is a sculpting tool. Now, we are not in high resolution, so if you don't have this, you click here. So it means it's going to work, but it's going to only push the point that exists. So right-click to change the brush. And let me just do a demo. So if you sculpt, you see, it's doing this. So once again, it's better to, uh, to use a pen. 
so this was pushed in uh, regular resolution. If you press shift, it would smooth, kind of erase or fade the push a bit. Often you shift click, and if you right uh, control, hello, one, two, it would reverse the tool. So instead of um, of uh, pushing, it will pull. You see, it goes in, create creases. So this is very useful. So right click, change the brush, and if you control right click, it's the hard, how hard is your brush. So look, if I make it harder, and now I uh, go control to reverse, you see it's going to do a very hard fall. So in the render, if my memory is good, what I was doing, it's using, um, we have image ink, where you can, uh, where is it here? Uh, here, image ink. First of all, use nozzle. It's much more uh, nicer to uh, to paint with nozzle. Much more natural. Um, if you go image ink, you can pick an image. You could go here, here, and you could paint with sculpt with something. Uh, let's go with this. You click once to assign it. Uh, this is the size of it, so it's the same as zooming. Um, and the other one is to rotate and then you can paint you don't really see much because we are not in a high res so if you go on and how many times careful huh? I'm already at 300,000 uh, let's go I'm gonna stay here and you see now you can see it um, I'm pressing hard so you can see it. Escape, and you see it painted this. Now, image ink is great and it's used. Huh? I'm not saying do not use it, but um, it's a 2D projection where those ones are 3D. And you can make your own. Actually, I just learned how to do this. I made my own the other day. Uh, I think it was just a rivet I did. And you basically render your 3D geometry using this tool somewhere here. Geometry to brush. I'll do a video on this. It's a bit advanced. You don't have to do it. But it's pretty neat. You can create your own. So those one are like height map. They are 3D. Those one are great. They are like push tool with fall off. But uh, those one are real 3D uh, sculpt. The fall off. That's why it doesn't look as good. Uh, Control right click look what I when I did it I had a huge fall off You see so it's uh, it's much more discreet So careful with the fall off Okay, so I, I did something like this and I remember using the shift to smooth so then you go shift and you blend them better You always smooth when you do a sculpt So I'm holding shift right now. That's too much, but so it was something like this, plus or minus. Uh, there's way more to show you, but uh, some of you are pure um, Rhino user, so I don't want to go too deep. And you know, I need to make more videos too. Um, if you wanted at this stage to 3D print it. In Modo, you could just go um, snap and precision, absolute scaling, and you could say the, the longest axis, so here we could say 18 mil, that would be a size 9 for a man, and you go uniform scale, and now you've got a, this will fit my hand. Uh, and to apply the sculpting, everything we did, you can just select this, so if you're ready to print, uh, and go uh, geometry um, back uh, sorry I'm tired uh, geometry back cache yeah. and I think it did it so now we should have a very high resolution you see so everything we did is 
in the mesh now and the only thing you have to do is save this as a STL stereolithography and you could print that uh, there should be STL here I think you have to go export file or, or you could just save as a 3dm and go back to Rhino but uh, export as here we go and you should have stereolithography here this one okay unless you just want to do a render if you want to do a render uh, you know the basic f8 morning I did this and so this is Rhino model and render and model built it but I made this so this is the skin in Modo and I built this uh, in Modo just so when I make uh, jewelry I have a, a neck that I can use. Okay, I hope you learned something. Cheers.